Good morning, everyone. Uh, just came off the field, had a good practice here on Tuesday. Um, got our sights on Minnesota. Uh, they're a really good team. I think they played Ohio State really well. I know they, they probably felt that they didn't play as well last week, but I'm sure they'll be uh, working on getting some things fixed, just like uh, from our standpoint as well. You know, just coming off of the Texas A&M game and uh, our team played hard. I thought we fought uh, toe to toe pretty well. The bottom line, we didn't, we weren't able to finish the game the way that we need to. But I think with a young team, we'll get a chance to learn from that experience and build on it and get ourselves to move forward. Uh, how to you know play a game when you're in that type of magnitude of, of being able to finish. Uh, but I did felt you know from the body of work, I felt our defense played really well. They kept us in the game. Offensively, we have to be able to find more opportunities to, uh, to score some points and to convert some third downs and get some continuity there. Uh, we'll work on those things in great detail this week. Um, I think all of our players understand it. They've all seen the tape, and they know there's a number of things in a lot of areas we need to continue to improve on, and, and we had it uh, with a really good start of the week with this Tuesday practice. So um, I'm ready to go. Curtis is ready to go. <laughs> Carl, uh, your, your AD has been pretty aggressive in future scheduling, and that includes this year. Uh, I mean, starting last week, 11 straight Power 5 opponents. Not a lot of schools do that. Uh, what's your feeling on the aggressiveness of the scheduling at CU and you know the challenges you guys face with you know, all those Power 5 teams? I'm in favor of it, particularly when this alliance kicks in. You know, it's going to be very similar. You know, the non-conference schedule is going to be, you know, some uh, a Big Ten opponent, an ACC opponent. So, you know, we got to get our program at a level where it's ready to compete every week with against a, a Power Five program. So, um, that's the direction we're heading. Uh, we've had good discussions about that, so I'm glad you noticed that. But, you know, that's why we got to keep bringing this program forward, keep developing our players, and and bringing in good recruits and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff that we have to continue to work really hard at to, to get this place, you know, where it should be. And I'm, I'm excited about that, actually. You know, I want, I want our players to feel, the guys that come here in the future, I want them to feel that they're going to play against, the, you know, a lot of top talent across the country on the East Coast and the Midwest and on the West Coast. Uh, and I think that's the beauty about, you know, when this alliance thing kicks in. Uh, does Minnesota's physicality bring, and how does last week and what you learned out of last week help you transition to that, what they're going to bring to the table? Very similar, very similar, you know, similar styles. I think offensively this team will try to run the football, you know, just as much as we try to. Um, you know, I think A&M had a little bit more maybe space, in the, you know, in their offense, or I think this team will try to churn it. You know, they'll try to run the football. You know, we would try to do the same. So it's going to be a, a good physical matchup, uh, which is what we would expect. Um, you know, we, like I said, we're, we're going to continue to bring a, a lot of people along that needs, a, you know, more development, to more detail, more precision in what we're doing. And, and that's a lot of different areas across this football team. But I, I know that the, the test we went through last week told us that we can battle in those types of trench type games and we need to move forward understanding that really every game from this point forward as we go into our conference schedule it's going to be very similar you know we're going to play against you know the USC's the UCLA's the, you know all those people that are really uh, have some good fronts and we're going to have to be able to compete with those guys and I I believe our team is ready for that. Through two games so far, offensively speaking, you guys have faced a good amount of third and longs. Uh, just against A&M, it was about eight yards to go uh, on average for third down. I'm just wondering what maybe some things uh, this offense can do moving down the, down the line to, to be a little bit more efficient and just kind of shorten the, the sticks, if you will, for third down. Absolutely. What, what, what ideas do you have? <laughs> oh, is, that, is that a real question? Yeah. <laughs> Jarek Broussard. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you, Justin. Um, you're right. You know, that's the efficiency has to be better. That was definitely evident this last game, not having enough efficiency and not getting good enough yardage on first and second down. So, you know, we have to be more proficient at that. 
you know, that's something that's definitely an issue uh, we need to address, and it's part of the many of things that we're, we're addressing. And, and we have to, I think that type of game told us, um, you know, really the, the players you can depend on a little bit too. So I, I think that's, that's something that we'll uh, continue to hopefully improve and get more people uh, involved in our offense that gives us a chance to, to have a, a number of weapons. Um, and right now we, we haven't had the efficiency of doing that. And that's why we've been in these long third downs. So, you know, we're working on all sorts of things, you know, whether it's running the ball with more efficiency or the, or the, the throwing game being more efficient. Um, you know, and that was probably the one area that needed to more, that more, more efficiency of anything was their throwing game. And we got to continue to work on that. We know we have a young quarterback. Everybody knows that. So, you know, it's challenging, you know, with young quarterbacks bringing them along. But Brendan is capable, very capable. And we have to give him, uh, you know, the reps and, and, and the confidence each and every week that he's making progress each and every week. For updates on Terrence Lang, we saw him have to go back to the sidelines a couple times against A&M, and Chris Miller also didn't uh, play against A&M. Any updates there? Both of them practiced today. They just have some soft tissue injuries right now that we're trying to nurse them through. Um, you know, Terrence is a big old tough kid, and you know he keeps going in and out. I mean, you know, but he's he's a little nicked up, but we we expect he's going to be ready to go. And the same thing with Chris. You know, Chris. Um, you know, he had a little bit of a soft tissue injury that he couldn't really, you know, in his position, he needs to be able to run fast, right? So it's hard for him to play in a game like that when he's not full speed. But he's he's made a lot of progress this week. He's practiced today, so we expect him to be back and ready this week. Yes, ma'am. Um, could you uh, elaborate a bit on the development of um, a second string quarterback and how that's going? And also the possibility of uh, that player coming in at times just to keep uh, Brendan from getting too beat up. Yeah, that's that's you're a head coach right there. That's, those are the things that I'm I usually am concerned of because we're not real deep at that position. Everybody knows that, and so whenever Brendan does have the ball and he's running down the field, you're always concerned about that that hit, right? So, but he's been taking care of himself pretty well. Um, you know, Drew Carter is a really good up-and-coming talent. We want him to have more experience playing, just like we did in the first game. But to do that, we have to be what Justin just said. We have to be more efficient offensively so and be in control of some of these games so we feel comfortable to, to put him in. But we would love for him to get more experience just because there's nothing f at that position that really is going to help that position grow is, is really playing playing at this level and seeing going against the college defense and how fast it is out there and how fast they have to digest information and performance. So we're trying to do all those things. It's just we haven't had a chance to do that this, this, past, this past game because of how close it was. But, uh, but we do feel that Drew has a lot of potential and we, th we want him to get some experience. We really do. How has his development been in, his development been in practice? Really good. Really good. I mean, he's, if you see him now compared to where he started, he, would, he used to start out for practice in the seven-on-seven -seven drill where the, the primary read was over there, but he started over here. So <laughs> now he knows where it is. You know, so it's, it's stuff that he's made. He's made a lot of progress you know, in what he does. And, but he's, you know, that's, what, that's a tough position to play. That's why you know, in the NFL, the quarterbacks make all the money, right? Because they, they have to handle a lot of information. And the same thing in the college level is that you still have to handle a lot of information. And it just takes a, some time for that position to grow as fast as we would want it. But he is making really good progress. I feel I'm excited about his future. I really am. Thank goodness we're a morning program. You know, we, we practice in the morning, so, you know, a lot of the times, you know, we, we're here in meetings by 7 o'clock, and, um, you know, we're on the field practicing by 9.15, 9.30. So there, we're a morning program, so it shouldn't affect us all that much. It would be, I would be more concerned if we were always an afternoon practice team and all of a sudden we have an 11 o'clock game. You know, that, that would kind of throw the schedule off some. So I think we're, we're going to be fine with that. You know, we... Uh, this, this team, it's, it's interesting right now. We had that night game, the first game of the year, right? And 
So we're in a hotel all day, right, on Saturday, waiting until this night game. Well, 60% of the team was up at breakfast at 6.30. And I'm like, well, why aren't you sleeping? <laughs> but they're used to, because they're used to getting up. So I'm just proving that point to you is that we're, we're a morning program, and that's, that's how we've been built. So I, I don't think it's going to affect us as much as people would think. Carl, to piggyback on the question before last, is the concern – uh, about the marathon, not a sprint with Brandon, affect what handcuff what you want to call or what you want to do with him in the run game because that seemed to be so effective in the first half. We can mix that up and do the zone read stuff. And two, how is Jarek? You know, he took a shot and you want to get him full go for this week too. Yeah, Jarek's doing. He's fine. He was at practice today, so he he's fine. And and and, and Brendan's fine too. I, the I'm such a want to get everybody involved in the offense that it's it's hard to just say we're all of a sudden we're going to be this type of offense and there's you know Brendan has some great attributes like you mentioned uh, but Brendan's got to also develop his passing game attributes you know just like that we know that in the in the big picture you know we our offense has to be proficient and balanced in both of those areas so we got to continue to stress those things and then we have these young receivers that need playtime, need catches, need to build their confidence in, 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 this, in the grand scheme of things, too, and the young tight ends. And so there's, there's a number of people you're trying to get touches with just because you're trying to grow your offense. And um, so we have to just continue to, pro to progress that way. We really do because we can't, we can't be, you know, all our eggs in one basket kind of thing. We have to – we have a good runner. You know, we have a number of good runners. Uh, we have a good quarterback that has the ability to do that. And we have receivers that really have a lot of, I call, I hate the term, I hate this word, but I'm, I'm not even going to say it. But they, they have what it takes to be successful. But they need that experience. You know, they need to continue to grow and immature um, and develop. Back at Minnesota, are there any players or position groups that have stood out to you so far looking at them? You know, looking at them on offense, they're they're you know they're, they're definitely a run first offense, and so they they really churn out yards, and they're pretty efficient at doing that. And they had, I know they missed their you know they had their starter get hurt in the first game after 170 something yards, and then the backup came in and played well, and then he played well in this game against the Miami of Ohio and had 170 something yards. So they will they were definitely they're they're really proficient at running the ball. They use a lot of tackles to play the tight end positions. You know, so they, they're, you know, they try to use a big offensive front and they try to, you know, make defenses defend them. So that's going to be a tremendous challenge, uh, again, for our defense this week. And then in the passing game, they, they're young at receiver. They're, I know their top guy may have a chance to be back this week, but, you know, they, they, they try to hit you on some plays, you know, to try to, if you're falling asleep, you know, because the run game tells you it brings you all in, and then all of a sudden they try to hit a go route or a post or, you know, a deep corner route, things like that. They, they keep you, you know, locked in on, on making sure your, your eyes are in the right place. So that's what they are offensively. They, 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 they're a tough physical team that they're going to try to, take advantage of some, uh, some issues if they see an issue on the defense. And I think on defense, they have some similarities to, to Texas A&M. The structure is similar. Now, they're not, you know, the, their fronts are, I think Texas A&M had a few more variations in their fronts. But, but this team is, is uh, I think, a very, very good defense. You know, they make you earn yards. It's hard to just uh, get a lot of explosive yards on these guys. And so we have to be patient. And, and the same thing, like you were asking about on the offensive side, our offense has to find where, the, where we f have some advantages and take advantage of some of those advantages. So it's a, it's a tremendous challenge for us, you know, because it's a really good team that's coming in here. And, and you know, we have to show that market, you know, marketable improvement from what we did last week going into this week. What, uh, what do you see about how they're playing that's allowing them to have the success they're having? I think that's a, as a program and as a team, the emphasis about just playing hard and playing for each other is, is really evident. You see that when you put the tape on and you watch. So this defense, um, 
they're, they know what their, their, their identity is. And, and that's something that the coaches preach. It starts with Coach Wilson. It starts with some of the veteran players that are on this defense, like a Nate Lamon or Carson Wells or, you know, those guys that have had some, some deep experience. So they, it's, that's the style of play that I'm used to when I was here 20 years ago. And that's the style of play that I will continue to stress if, as long as I'm here is to play a really gr aggressive, tough edge defense and make you earn everything you get. And hopefully, you know, in time, we'll be generating a lot of turnovers so that our offense get more chances with the football. So that's the goal. Carl, uh, Brendan, you know, you mentioned uh, room for improvement in the passing game. You haven't seen a lot of reckless turnovers. He hasn't seen to be forcing the ball. In general, have you been pleased with his, his decision-making back there? I have been, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because he has not been reckless with the football. Um, I know the one interception he had was a, a misprotection, right? He didn't see it. He was blindsided. He was thrown left, and the guy hit him on this side. The ball gets kind of fluffed up in the air, and it goes to a defensive lineman. So it really wasn't his fault. But... You're right. He has been taking care of the football. He hasn't been just erratically just throwing passes in a, you know, to the other team. And, and that's a really, really great trait <laughs> for a quarterback. Now, on the other side of it, too, you want a guy that does take some chances and believes in his receivers and will put the ball in the right spot at the right time. You know, those are the things that he has to continue to develop, too. And, but he is definitely doing some of the things very, very well, like you're saying, taking care of the football. But the other part is that he still has to grow and have his anticipation be, be faster. Carl, uh, Cole Becker has had a couple of tough assignments to begin his college kicking career. Uh, the 53-yarder that went off the crossbar against UNC, and then I think the one he attempted against A&M was 46 or 47 yards. Have you had a chance maybe to just, just to talk to him, to, to check in and see how he's doing? And, and is his confidence something that, that you feel like you need to keep a pulse on, just that being a young guy and having missed his first couple of attempts? We did talk and had all of those discussions today in a fun way. And, you know, what, what we did for him is that he has a tremendous leg. I have a tremendous – this whole team has a lot of confidence in this kid because he – 55 yards is really not hard for this kid. Uh, but as you know, he's young. You know, he was in two, you know, pretty dynamic, uh, you know, his first field goal of the season as a, as a freshman is a 53-yarder. How about that? You know, it's not a 28-yarder or a 30-yarder, it's a 53-yarder. And he kind of hit it, probably he, he hit it a little bit low, and, you know, he normally doesn't hit it that low. And, you know, so I'm sure he was thinking about some things on, on that one. It was in line, but it hits the crossbar. Then the one last week, the 46-yarder, he just, you know, his follow-through in his plant leg was just a little bit off. And... But we just had practice today, and we, we made him make 45 to 55-yard field goals, and he hit them all. Just because I feel like, you know what, instead of starting him at the 20-yard mark, which is what we normally do when we get into our field goal period, I said, let's just start him back deep. So he's used to, to doing that. And I told him, this is what I told him, Just I said, you know, you have plenty of leg with three-quarters of your stroke to hit a 55-yarder. So just line it up, swing easy and just let the ball work, and he hit them all today. So he has, he has a, he's going to be a really good player. I mean, a really good player. But, yes, he's had a couple of you know, tough situations that he didn't hit, but I'm very confident. This whole team is very confident in Cole because they, they see him every day and how he kicks, and he's a, he's a tremendous talent. Carl, in your position, how do you balance being a mentor to young men and wanting them to learn from mistakes and – wanting to do what's best for the football team. And obviously, I'm asking about Levante. Um, and how many more chances do you give a player that has repeatedly made some mistakes? Yeah, there's, I mean, part of, part of my culture, our culture we're building here is that we, we are in the education business. We are into helping men mature to become great young men and very respectful men. And so there is going to be the ebbs and flows of guys are getting their you know, their wrists slapped, you know, when they're making mistakes or they get a suspension, things like that. And so I'm, I'm, my job is still, the bottom line is when, they, when they're done in school here and they're done with their eligibility and they're moving on to whatever is the next level or professional in the, in the career uh, from a business standpoint, is for them to be fully functional as humans 
and understanding tough moments and understanding that life's not fair. You know, I do use that phrase a lot. Man, don't ever think that life's going to be easy. It's not going to be fair. You're going to have hurdles and obstacles and things you're going to have to navigate. It's all going to be your mental approach to how you're going to overcome those things. So, you know, that's, those are the things that we do. So I'm not in the business of really trying to get people out of here. But there's a certain point, though, that if they're just not learning and they just, they've done it, you know, three or four or five times, and there's, there's got to be that, that, you know, we got to go. But the things that I do basically is to, is to give guys second chances, help them grow and mature as young men, and, and then hopefully they learn from some of those mistakes that they've made, you know, just like when I was a young kid there, you know, young man their age. So it's uh, – Tough, there's, there's tough pills to swallow because I won't jeopardize, I will not jeopardize how we run our program. I don't care who you are. You may, it might be a starter. It might be an All-American that gets in trouble if something happens. Guess what? He's going to pay the penalty. And every one of these players know what those issues are. And so the, they get it. They understand it. And I don't think they want to be governed any differently, to be honest with you. So... And that's, that's part of the reason why I think our program is moving forward, is that I'm completely honest with these guys. And I, they, went, they know that if I say something, it's, it's golden. It's, it's something that's the truth, or it's, it's at least the truth from my perspective. Um, but I'm not, I don't say that I'm, I know everything, though. You know, and I'll tell them that, hey, I don't know everything, but these are the things I know, and this is how we're going to handle things. And, and this is how we're going to deal with those things. But these, these guys are they're great. I, I get up every morning excited about each day just being with this team because they're, they're good young men that have great aspirations, and, and they want it on the football field, but it's also what they want in life. So I know it was a long answer, <laughs> but since you asked it, I thought I'd give you a little bit of the why. To piggyback off that, then, will, will Avante have a chance to come back, or where is that? Sure, he does. does have a chance. I, I believe in that. I, I believe in rehabilitation. I do. But he's got, he's got some stipulations that he's going to have to show us that he wants to be back. Absolutely. All right, Coach, we'll take a quick Troy, anything on the Zoom? Yeah, we do have a couple. Uh, Pat Graham uh, from the AP head. Here we go again. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Thanks for, thanks for taking the time. Hi, Troy. Um, oh, Pat. Hey. Oh, Pat. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Tonight. Just a quick question on an overview. Um, I know it's early and you guys have yet to play a conference game, but what are your early thoughts as you look around the Pac-12? I'm not even thinking about the Pac-12 right now. I got Minnesota that's right in front of me. I know that we got to get through this game before any other game. So um, I'm, we have some familiarity in answering your question, Pat, about what our teams are in our conference, but uh, I'm not looking ahead that far ahead. Um, this team's not looking that far ahead either. We're trying to take care of what's in front of us now, and you know, I know our first conference game is Arizona State, and you know, and that's down there. And uh, you know, we know we got to be playing really, really well. You know, uh, playing on the road, and now we have crowds and all that stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about. It, you know, in that given time. But right now, we're focused on Minnesota. Okay, and a question from Matt Kennedy. Hey, Coach, thanks for taking the time. Uh, quick question. One of the most significant changes in your team's progression from week one to week two were the penalties. Only two penalties for 17 yards against AM and m and then compared to the 12 against UNC. From your perspective, how well is your team responding and coaching to improve in other areas besides penalties that you talked about more on Saturday and where your team wants to be by the end of the year? That's the great thing about that's a great question, Matt, because that's what I love about this team. They respond to anything that we do that hasn't been well. They fixed it. I know penalties was the biggest issue in the first game. And guess what? We we played a, a higher caliber of opponent and we played smarter. So that was huge, you know, to reduce those things. And then I think they're at the point where because of moments in this game and usually when you're playing against a really good team and you're in a, in a game and it's a fourth quarter uh, type of game where you need to finish, you know, we, we're going to learn quite a bit about that part. You know, we can stand toe to toe, but is to finish and take advantage of situations we have to be better at. I think we all understand it. And that's what's great about this team. They respond and see it 
and they react to it. And, and they, they're ready to, to move forward on doing those things. So we had a great Tuesday practice today. And they, they're just very responsive to everything that we talk to them about. Because they see it, they understand what we're trying to do, and then they just go to work. So that's what I love about this football team. Anything else from anyone on the Zoom? Okay. All Thanks, right. Curtis. Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks.